In this video, we're going to look at the Atlas projection type in the UV projection tool. Now, in the past couple of videos, we've been exploring the art of UV mapping, and we're going to expand this art uh, once again by exploring how to use the Atlas projection type inside of Modo. So as you can see, just a very, very simple scene, just a basic basic uh, unit primitive cube. Now I want to generate a UV map for this cube. So I'm going to select it real fast, go to UV projection tool. And on the surface, I'm thinking um, from all of these options, maybe I use cubic instead of you know some of these other types. Because I mentioned in the previous video that we want to uh, try to as closely match the overall shape of our 3D object object with one of these projection types. So cubic makes sense. So select it, it was click on it and whoa, here is our underlying issue. Now it's done a great job. I mean it's gone ahead and done it for us. It has generated UV islands for each one of these parts, but yeah was as much like we saw with the cylinder, we have overlapping UV islands. And in, in this time, I can't move them. I can't move them apart from each other. They're all connected, so we have a big, big problem. Thus enter the Atlas projection type. Let me hit undo real fast a couple times to get us back. Here we are, UV projection tool. And under the projection type, I'm going to choose Atlas. Now, Atlas is a pretty amazing, amazing tool. What happens, oh, and it's already done it. What happens when we choose the Atlas projection type is that the computer is going to go in and it's going to analyze the surface direction of all the polygons on my shape. And it's going to try to do its best to generate surface, uh, excuse me, UV islands for each one of those surfaces. Let me drop the tool and deselect. And as you can see, it's done a fantastic fantastic job of generating UV islands for us. Okay, so keep this in mind. What, it, what it's doing is that it is analyzing the direction of all of these surfaces and it's trying to figure out how to generate UV islands for us. Now this is extraordinarily powerful and it, nine times out of ten it will do us a really good job, but let me show you some, some of the caveats of working with inside this tool, okay? Um, I wanna get rid of all of these UV islands over here real fast and just delete them, bye-bye. And I wanna activate another mesh, okay? I'm gonna get rid of all these guys in here too. UV operator, oops, excuse me, delete, there we go. Okay, so I have what uh, is going to be a very simple little wooden crate, just uh, very simple. Kind of bevel the uh, some faces together and then connected the corners. Not, not, nothing too nothing too fancy here on the side of the modeling. But let's explore how we can generate the UV islands for for something like this. Now on the surface, it might seem like using the Atlas projection type is our way to go. But check it out. Okay, and it did it did a fantastic job. It went in and analyzed all the surfaces and it made it did a pretty darn good job of dividing up my entire mesh into different UV islands. Now this this uh, 78 polygonal uh, um, cube has now been turned into something that has you know a bunch, dozens, a couple dozen maybe different UV islands. Now we, we, ultimately when we're designing our UV maps we want to try to re, uh, avoid having as many separate pieces as we can. There's certain situations where you can't you can't avoid it. More pieces, more separate islands mean more potential seams over here in Photoshop and definitely here in Modo when we're painting our painting our textures. So we want to try our, try to do our best to avoid having everything separated out like this. And herein lies the major major problem with the Atlas projection type. It's going to do a fantastic job of very quickly generating UV islands for everything on that shape, but it's going to generate a lot of them. It's going to generate a lot of them. My other big beef with the Atlas projection type is that it does a pretty poor job in very certain situ situations of uh, maintaining the correct proportion and scale of the UV island in relation to in relationship to its 3D counterpart. So I've selected that little UV island, okay, in my UV map, and if we look at its 3D counterpart, yeah, it looks nothing like each other. This one's kind of long and skinny, and this one's kind of short and fat. Okay, so it didn't really do a great job of maintaining the correct proportion and scale of this UV uh, of this polygon in my UV map. So it's 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 a double-edged sword. It will give you a lot of UV islands quickly, but it might not necessarily give you the best representation of your uh, of your three-dimensional object in a two-dimensional UV map. So buyer beware. It's a great tool, but it definitely comes with a couple caveats.